Last week we had a great conversation with Katie down at the Portland waterfront and today we're on the new section of the quarter in Somerset County in northern Maine to get Katie's perspectives on the great project that we have here for the state of Maine. I'm Thorne Dickinson. This show allows me to talk with Mainers working on the most important clean energy project to ever come to our state. We discuss how this project is providing jobs and other benefits today while creating clean energy for a better tomorrow. So Katie, I really loved uh, last week's episode. I don't know what your um, perspective was or if you've got any feedback on it. Yeah, I definitely got feedback. People, my family especially, really enjoyed it. But what I found really interesting, I posted it on my social media and a lot of people reached out to me to ask me more questions about the project. And uh, some of them were maybe uh, had their minds made up and some of them were undecided. And I was able to answer some of their questions and maybe bust some of their, uh, the myths that they had heard and misunderstandings that they had about the project. And uh, I think I was able to kind of sway some people in the opposite direction than they were, they came into the conversation. So that was really great for me. Oh, that's that's fantastic, and I uh, I think now I my expectation is you've been on the right of way a couple of times now. We're here obviously today up in the new segment, segment one. Uh, what have what have your experiences been so far in the right of way? Yeah, so I came up uh, last week for wood turtle training, which uh, was hosted by the my old pals at Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. I actually knew the biologists who were hosting it, and it's part of the the environmental permitting process that uh, environmental inspectors know how to identify wood turtles along the right of way and move them uh, so they're not in the path of any kind of danger. And there's all these you know uh, rules about how to move them and how to identify them and uh, the biologist who is hosting the training actually hid a turtle shell in the woods and taught the inspectors how to sweep to look for it and within 20 minutes they found the turtle shell and it looks I mean it's not brightly colored it's supposed to blend in so it was pretty cool that they were able to find it quickly and um, and then if it were a real turtle move it if they had to to, to help keep wildlife safe and, and that's a species of special concern so it was neat to, to go to that training and hear it. One of the most amazing things about the project for me has been to go through these, you know, three and a half year regulatory process. And um, we've interacted with so many of the different state um, communities that are there to protect, uh, protect Maine from projects and make sure that good projects go forward. And I was always incredibly impressed with all the experts, all the professionals in that area. Um, it's been frustrating to me to see uh, some people, particularly in the opposition, that target those people as not being, uh, doing a good job. And it'd be interesting to hear what your perspective is on that. Yeah, and to, you know, I, from folks that I've spoken to from the department, uh, they acknowledge this is one of the most regulated uh, projects in Maine's history. And I also, you know, I, I know those people. I worked with a lot of the people from MDIFW to other state agencies, and the people that work at those places are very uh, passionate, well-educated, mindful, uh, conservationists and enthusiasts and and they're not just gonna pass something off I mean they will scrutinize it maybe more than the average person because they have some background they have some knowledge and they've been doing it sometimes for a decade or two decades and and some of these professionals have been responsible for bringing back let's say the eagle population in our state or uh, helping contribute to uh, keeping our moose population safe in our state and so when uh, when I hear knocks against them and, and insinuations that they're not doing their job I know for a fact that that's not the case yeah, we just had that recently happen where we had some opponents that were arguing that the project wasn't being operated within its guidelines and really criticizing both the hardworking Mainers that are, that are making sure that every part of this project we're in compliance with, but also arguing against that the DEP wasn't doing their job. And I think the letter that came out from the DEP was very, very strong. And I think it showed that ethic. It was a, these, these people, their inspectors, the people that are in, even the commissioner herself came out here to make sure that this project was following all, the, all, the, all those guidelines that are there. Yeah, and to, I think that was very cool that they sent that out because I, I know that the, the professionals that are looking at this are uh, experts in their field. And they are the people who we turn to for every other matter that's environmental in nature. And so to question them on this project specifically is, is interesting to me. It makes me question who's questioning it. <laughs> yeah. 
And your eye definitely looks at things differently than I do. You know, I imagine uh, what this is going to look like. I imagine the, the poles here and fitting in. But... Yeah, it, I don't, the funny thing is, is I'm not, I don't <laughs> think about that as much as I think about. Okay, like look at this new growth trees. We have a cut here and then vegetation will come up with the tapering. And that from my perspective is fodder for pollinators, for uh, moose, browse for moose. Moose love corridors like this to hang out and eat food. So yeah, I see a, a, a maybe a little different than what an engineer or construction person sees. I was picturing in my mind this storied, historic, 100-year-old forest with huge trees, absolutely pristine, but this is a logging forest. This is a working forest, and you can see that these, I wasn't expecting leggy, <laughs> reedy trees. These are five to 10 year old trees. They've been cut before. Uh, this is a working forest, they'll be cut again. Uh, so I w that was the first thing that was surprising to me because the opposition really paints this picture of this pristine forest and, and that is definitely what I had in, in mind. Uh, but this is a, a functional forest that's been used and, and will be used again for harvesting, yeah. Had another great conversation with Katie, and I'm extremely excited to see how she applies her knowledge and her past experience and her passion to this project to make it even better.